Hard Guy, by H.B. Carlton. He was standing at the side of the glassite superhighway, his arm half raised, thumb pointed in the same direction as that of the approaching rocket car. Ordinarily, Frederick Martin would have passed a hitchhiker without stopping, but there was something in the bearing and appearance of this one that caused him to apply his brakes. Martin opened the door next to the vacant seat beside him. Going my way? he asked. A pair of steady, unsmiling blue eyes looked over him. Yeah. All right, then. Hop in. The hitchhiker took his time. He slid into the seat with casual deliberateness and slammed the car door shut. The rocket car got underway once more. They rode in silence for half a mile or so. Finally, Martin glanced questioningly at his companion's expressionless profile. Where are you headed for? he asked. Dentonville. He spoke from the corner of his mouth, without turning his head. Oh yes, that's the next town, isn't it? Yeah. Not very communicative, reflected Martin, noticing the rather ragged condition of the other's Celolex clothing. Have much trouble getting rides? The passenger turned his head, his blue eyes without emotion. Yeah, most guys are leery about picking up hitchhikers, scared they'll get robbed. Martin pursed his lips nodded. Something to that, all right. I'm usually pretty careful myself, but I figured you looked okay. Can't always tell by looks, was the calm reply. Of course, us guys mostly pick out some guy with a swell atomic mobile if we're gonna pull a stick up. When we see an old heap like this one, there's usually not enough dough to make it pay. Martin felt his jaw drop. Say, you sound like you go in for that sort of thing. I'm telling you right now, I haven't enough cash on me to make it worth your while. I'm just a salesman, trying to get along. You got nothing to worry about, his passenger assured him. Stick-ups ain't my racket. An audible sigh of relief escaped Martin. I'm certainly glad to hear that. What is your, er, racket, anyway? The blue eyes frosted over. Look, chum, sometimes it ain't exactly healthy to ask questions like that. Pardon me, Martin said hastily. I didn't mean anything. It's none of my business, of course. The calm eyes flicked over his contrite expression. Skip it, pal. You look like a right guy. I'll put you next to something. Only keep your lip buttoned, see? Oh, absolutely. I'm Mike Egan, head of the Strato Rovers. No. Martin was plainly awed. The Strato Rovers, eh? I've heard of them, all right. The other nodded complacently. Yeah, we're the toughest mob this side of Mars. We don't bother honest people, though. We get ours from the crooks and racketeers. They can't squeal to the interplanetary police. There's a lot in what you say, agreed Martin. And of course, that puts your mob in the Robin Hood class. Robin Hood nuts. That guy was a dope. Running around with bows and arrows? Why? We got a mystery ray that paralyzes anybody that starts up with us. They're all right when it wears off, but by that time, we get away. Martin was properly impressed. A mystery ray? With a weapon like that, you should be able to walk into a bank and clean it out without any trouble. His passenger's lips curled. I told you, we don't bother honest people. We even help the SP sometimes. Right now, we're working with the Earth-Mars G-Men in rounding up a gang of fifth columnists that are planning on taking over the government. They're led by the Black Hornet. This Black Hornet goes around pretending like he's a big businessman, but he's really an international spy. A what? An international spy, repeated Martin's companion shortly. The EMG men say he's the most dangerous man in the country, but he won't last long with the Strato Rovers on his trail. Martin nodded. I can believe that. Tell me, Egan, what are you doing out here in a small earth town like Dentonville? The government's building some kind of ammunition place near here, and I understand the Black Hornet's figuring on wrecking everything. Of course, he won't get away with it. Scattered plasticade houses on either side of the road indicated that they had reached the outskirts of Dentonville. Mike Egan pointed ahead to a small white house set back among a cluster of trees. There's where I'm holed up. Drop me off in front. 
A young woman in a faded blue satin glass house dress was standing at the front of the white picket fence. She watched in silence as the passenger stepped from the rocket car and lifted his hand to the driver in careless farewell. Thanks for the lift, chum, said Mike Egan. Not at all, replied Martin. Glad to have been of service to Mike Egan. The woman smiled to him. He's told you his name, I see. Martin lifted his hat. Indeed, he has. Michael is all right, she said. I do think, though, that he reads too many Buck Gordon interplanetary comic books for a boy of eleven. End of Hard Guy by H. B. Carlton